early in the surveys, when you go back to like 2003, four, five, um, we were doing these surveys, we would see, you know, fish here and there. And what's really been special to me is having seen since then areas that mm, you'd be happy if you saw one or two fish in, in a given length of time. Now, some of these areas are just teeming with fish. You come up over the top of a rock and it's just a swarm of, of juvenile fish mixed with some of the, uh, you know, the blues and, and other species that kind of live up off the top of it. And on the rock head itself are, are all of these rockfish that just weren't there before. And it's, it's really a special thing to see because this wasn't there, you know, 15 years ago. And now we're seeing seeing this and, and it really is an exciting time for uh, marine science and, and the marine protected areas that we're studying. Marine Applied Research and Exploration, MARE, is a nonprofit organization founded in 2003 whose mission is to explore and document deep ocean ecosystems. For over 20 years, the MARE team has surveyed the deep water sites within California's network of 124 marine protected areas, a network designed to protect and revitalize the state's coastal waters. The MARI team has visually recorded over 2,700 kilometers of seafloor off California's coast alone, much of which had never been seen before. Filling the deep water data gap inside and outside the marine reserves. I say we're the marriage between engineers and biologists. Our engineers actually take ROVs and they develop them, uh, incorporate different features that we need them to have, and then we actually take those ROVs, we deploy them off the ships ourselves, we do these surveys, we bring the data back in, we do all of the data analysis and post-processing ourselves, and then the biologists actually write the reports. <laughs> I might be working late, and he gets bummed, like. <laughs> so I'm the chief engineer at Mari. Everything we do is based on undersea robotics. So this is our deep diving robotic submarine, the Beagle. Beagle is an ROV. It's a remotely operated unmanned vehicle and it swims around, it has cameras and lights and all sorts of water sensors on it. That allow us to dive to the seafloor and collect not only sensor data, but, but video imagery. And we're collecting all of this imagery to really have a visual assessment of what is down there. I grew up in Marin County, often fishing with my father. By the time I was 25, I saw a decline in some of the iconic fisheries. And that always stuck in my mind is how, how come this is not sustainable? And so what I, I wanted to do was find a way that I could help rebuild the oceans. But when I first heard about California's bold mandate to create marine reserves, I was anxious to help. And that's why I created Mare. ROV deployments are really a dance between the ship and the ROV. 
And as we deploy, the ship needs to stay within 50 meters of us the whole time. That is a dance that requires a lot of skill and a lot of patience. When I first started and I had never seen the deep sea before and I was combing through footage as a young person who just started working at a nonprofit, um, one of the first days that I was here, there was an eight minute clip of a giant Pacific octopus walking across the bottom of the ocean. I was sitting there looking at this, this extremely charismatic species just interacting and letting the ROV on it for about eight minutes straight and totally changed my perception of everything here and made me want to just keep looking at everything. In the early part of my career, I spent a lot of time actually out doing the surveys and driving the ROV and just seeing it firsthand. And for me personally, that was exciting, just to have a feel for these habitats across the whole state. You feel like you have been there. It was a partnership that started at the Channel Islands in 2003 and has since led to the surveying of 196 sites statewide. What we've been able to do with that partnership shows in the data set that we now have and the, the analyses that we're able to, to do with that data and the information we're able to extract from it. In the past, deep habitats have been a mystery. You know, we, we drop fishing lines down and pull up what's there, but we don't really know what's happening. And the data that has been collected over the years with MARI and ROVs is going to allow us to answer some of those questions of how the populations are changing and how dynamic those habitats are. Fish bingo. Dirk is in the lead. Mike is in last place. Andy's making up the rules as he goes. And Rick is in total control. He gets to take the pictures. Vermilion, copper, and a gopher. And one vermilion, one copper. Whoa, one vermilion, one copper. Bingo! <laughs> You win, Dirk. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You haven't made up that rule yet. I guess I get to clean the bathroom. <laughs> winner, winner, winner. <laughs> In the 70s, we kicked out all the foreign fishing fleets and then we overfished our own waters. California took a very bold step and decided to implement the Marine Life Protection Act and to designate no fishing zones along the West Coast. The results of this are starting to show promising signs and we're excited to see where things go from here. We've been the first in the world to put together an ecological network rather than just protecting areas that people think are really nice. So the monitoring that we're doing is providing groundbreaking information for the rest of the world relative to conservation issues 
and also relative to understanding global climate change. How are they functioning in response to the impacts of climate change? Are they able to be more resilient to those impacts? So we're really excited that we have this network where we can start asking those questions and really starting to figure out the benefit. The ongoing monitoring of this precious resource is vital for the state of California, its economy, its livelihood, its recreation, and I mean, you name it. 